Hey guys, it's Megan. Welcome to my third annual book gift giving guide. Um, for my last two, you can see them down in the description box, but uh, yes, it's that time of year again. Note the uh, light bulb, earrings, and the um, decor I've got here. I wanted to have a book tree, you know, right here, all nice and pretty when I did this, but I wanted to get this up in plenty of time uh, before Christmas and um, Life is just too chaotic at the moment with final exams, final assignments, and work to do the book tree. But that'll be one of the first things I do as soon as my final exam is done. So I tried to get a fairly full spectrum of uh, book recs uh, for this year. Um, some of them I don't have um, because I either read them once or gave them away. Um, and there's a couple that are on my wish list currently that I don't have yet, but I'm going to recommend anyway um, because I've seen them in person. Um, so the first uh, category is for toddlers, and for that one I decided to go with any books in uh, the Spot series um, by Eric Carle, and I love these board books in particular um, because of how interactive they are. They've got the bold, beautiful colors that attract kids, but they've also got the sort of lift the flap um, interactive quality to them. And you can do multiple voices for them too, so it's really fun. And for the next sort of age level up in picture books, we have The Tale of Kitty in Boots. This is published posthumously by Beatrix Potter. Obviously she died in the 40s, but this is a recently uncovered work that was uh, published um, just a short while ago, and um, the illustrations were completed by Quentin Blake, who you may recognize uh, from doing the Roald Dahl books, um, the illustration for his books. And um, so this is on my wish list. Um, I haven't been able to justify picking it up for myself yet, but it's Beatrix Potter, so I'm pretty sure that I will love it, and anybody else who's a fan of Beatrix Potter will probably love it too. For the middle grader that you are buying for, so elementary school kids um, before preteen kind of area, I have Ghosts by Raina Telgemeier. I'm still working on pronouncing her name, but yes, this is a graphic novel that is about two sisters who move away from the neighborhood that they're accustomed to and have grown up in to move to a more seaside uh, kind of locale um, for the younger sister who has cystic fibrosis. And so in that way, it's a uh, kind of a heavier kind of story, but their relationship is still fantastic. She has such a great sense of humor about her illness and everything, and um, it gets sad and heavy at times, but um, it um, goes a lot with... Uh, the Day of the Dead, and I can never pronounce it, Dio, Dios es Mortos, I can't say it ever. But anyway, it's a wonderful story. I blew through it in like half an hour, and I'm going to be reading it again and again, I can tell. Um, but anyway, this is awesome for the middle grade kid in your life. Moving up to YA Contemporary, we have The Sun is Also a Star by Nicola Yoon. I recently finished this myself and um, I read Everything Everything by Nicola Yoon and loved it so much. So this is her second book and it is about a girl who's Jamaican and her family is about to be deported and her meeting this boy Daniel who is South Korean and he is um, on his way to an interview um, for Yale. And um, they meet, and the novel takes place over the course of that one day. She doesn't believe in love, and he's a poet, and he does, and there's just a lot going on. And I love Nicola Yoon's um, form of storytelling. It's very unique. Um, she goes and changes chapters into different perspectives of the people around them, and then changes perspectives between Natasha and Daniel. And it's just great. It's not lovey-dovey that it makes you sickly, but it's just very profound in a lot of ways, and I really enjoyed it, and I think it would be great for the kind of reader, um, the teen reader who loves contemporary stories, made to fit in our current period of time. The next category is YA fantasy, and I haven't read a whole lot of that this past year, but um, I can definitely recommend The Remnant Chronicles by Mary E. Pearson. This is a series that I had the first two books, and um, I got the third one from the library and decided to give the first two books away, but like to make room, continue to make room, turn have turnover on my shelves. But yes, it is about this girl, Princess Leah, who is going to be in arranged marriage with the prince and doesn't want to. She wants to take control of her own destiny. And so she runs away and there's uh, two guys who go after her. Um, one is the prince that she has jilted and the other is an assassin who is sent to kill her. And the perspectives go from each of these three people and of the two guys, you don't know which one's the prince and which one's the assassin. So for that first book, that was definitely um, like a game changer and unexpected and so good. I loved that 
unique kind of plot device. Um, and after that, the uh, two books after that are just as good, and I found it to be a really satisfying and sometimes surprising conclusion um, to the series. So overall, I would definitely go with picking it up. The uh, first book is The Kiss of Deception. So good. For the adult, um, we've got um, two books that I wanted to do. The first one is The Girls by Emma Klein. I read this over the past summer, and it uh, switches perspectives from um, current um, current present day, um, where a woman um, who's around in her 60s, I guess, um, she goes back in her mind to when she was a girl in 1969. And it's kind of a spoof, I want to say, um, where she is a part of this cult and they there is a mass murder. And so automatically your mind goes to the Manson killings. There's so much that's borrowed um, in heaping spoonfuls from the um, days of Manson and things about him and um, his girls. And um, there's a character who is very clearly supposed to be Sadie Atkins. And um, so this girl who doesn't really exist, but she does, you know, but she does in this book. She is a Manson follower, but obviously it's not about Manson himself. It just, you know, it's a total... I don't want to say parody because it's not like it's comedic or anything, but you know what I mean. It, sometimes it was really hard to read, but the writing was so good. It was so well written. And for anybody who's fans of that kind of time period, um, this is definitely the book for you. And the other book that I wanted to mention is uh, 13 Ways of Looking at a Fat Girl by Mona Awad, I believe is how you pronounce her name. And so this is my pick for a sort of um, Canadian uh, fiction. This just came out this year and it is about a girl. It's 13 chapters of her life, but they're not all necessarily in her perspective and they're not chronological to the point where it's like this happened one day and this happened the next. They're 13 chapters of different time periods in this woman's life and it was so good, it was so uniquely told, and it was definitely a great critique on the media and how women view their bodies and stuff. Not directly like implicating the media or whatever, but you can definitely see the influences and um, the effects of it on this woman, and you can imagine how many other women are going through the same thing on a day-to-day -day basis in their lives. So this is definitely a highlight book of the year for me, and so if you're the person who's into that kind of stuff, this might be the book for you or for the person that you're thinking of buying it for. So for the classics portion, I could not not mention these books, which is the Penguin uh, Vintage Classic Bronte series. So yes, I love these covers. I think they're absolutely gorgeous, and for the classic lover, this could be a good choice. And for the graphic novel or graphic memoir kind of lover in your life, I would recommend something new, Tales from a Makeshift Bride by Lucy Nisley. This is her latest book. And uh, it chronicles um, her engagement and subsequent wedding um, that she had with her husband, John. And I love Lucy Nisley so much. She is my favorite graphic memoirist. Um, her work is so funny and sincere, and um, she's not afraid to reveal anything, like, to go all out. Um, in terms of showing herself and awkwardness and embarrassment and stuff. And she just does it with such, like, a flair and um, air of comedy that I love. And I love her art style, too. It's not particularly, like, illustrative and, like, you know, I don't, I don't know what's the word, but it's very simple and says it. And she, this one, and this one, it's really cool, too. Um, because she doesn't hold back in terms of how hard it is being engaged, all the pressures and economics and, like, um, vanity and tra and tradition, too. She goes into all, of, like, the traditions that are in the back of all the stuff that we do at weddings and historically examines them. And that was so cool, too, because you learn some new things. If um, you're somebody who's planning a wedding or really loves graphic novels, this is what I would pick. The next category is for those who love to do adult coloring books, and I could not do, I could not not do a Joanna Bosford, and so I picked um, one of her more recent ones, which is Magical Jungle. Love this cover with the gold foiling, and what I love about her work, besides how intricate it is, um, is the fact that she does uh, like treasure hunts kind of thing. She does like look and finds, so she'll give you a list of objects and how many of their 
them that there are uh, throughout the book and you get to try and find them which is just an additional little bit of fun that you get to do. And for the artist in your life in terms of like a tutorial kind of book I have freehand sketching tips and tricks drawn from art um, edited by Helen Birch and it's just a comp compilation of all of these artists um, different artists who use different techniques um, in their work and it shows you how they do them and it shows like a visual example of them being executed and I loved it. I just read like a few new profiles a day and by the end of it I was just so excited about the possibilities of what I could instill in my artwork and so yeah, I would recommend this and it's so little so it's compact it's pocket edition you can just carry it around with you. Next category is for the movie lover and for this one I had to pick another one that is technically on my wish list at the moment and it is Turner Classic Movies The Essentials 52 must see movies and why they matter. Uh, I've seen this in person at chapters and flipped through it. It is great. What I love about Turner's Classic Turner's classic movie books is that they are so beautifully done with their um, with their photos that they include and the kinds of details that they choose to include. They've got like dossier type information about um, each film and why it matters and it's really cool. Um, I guess I should have prefaced this by saying for the classic movie lover in your life because I don't I uh, typically read a ton of books about like contemporary films. Sometimes I do for like if they're based on films that like I really love that are contemporary but mostly I'm a classics kind of girl. So yeah this could be a possibility for you. For the feminist in your life I had to pick Feminist Fight Club an office survival manual in brackets for a sexist workplace by Jessica Bennett. This is hilarious. Um, this talks about like the serious subject of workplace and office harassment, but she does it, she d executes it in such a funny way. Um, and I think it includes a lot of practical information on how to handle situations professionally, but firmly. And um, it's just really fascinating. There's a lot of background information in here too. I decided this year I wanted to include a sort of randoms category, um, whereby it's nonfiction, but it's for the person who, um, really likes in taking random facts and random information. Um, and in the case of this one, it's also for people who have a penchant for like learning new things in, in history of um, interesting and different objects. And I went with The Perfection of the Paperclip, Curious Tales of Invention, Accidental Genius, and Stationary Obsession by James Ward. This one I picked up in the beginning because of the gorgeous and papers um, and for the fact of what it talks about and it's literally a history of office supplies and stationary paraphernalia and I know that's a weird thing to be interested in but there are people who um, are fascinated by that kind of thing like even like here scotch tape the final category that I always love doing is bookish booky book book things um, not things um, that would be a separate uh, video but um, for books about books for book lovers I always recommend the bookshop book by Jen Campbell and this is a wonderful little history um, well slash like comprehensive and contemporary guide uh, to bookstores around the world. There's over 300 talked about in here from six out of seven continents and they come from the humblest of spaces to like boats to stalls and then up to like the mo some of the more famous bookshops that like the Strand or Shakespeare and Co. They're all talked about and in between there's lovely little bookish tidbits and facts and um, talks with some famous um, authors like Ali Smith. I just love this book. Um, it's definitely a guide for um, taking, like when you travel across the world and you want to know what bookshops are in the area, this is the guide you would take with you. And the other book that I wanted to um, talk about in that category that was new to me is Classic Penguin cover to cover um, with an introduction by Paul Buckley and it's edited by him too. And this just came out this uh, year and uh, I stumbled upon it. Um, at chapters and I had to have it and I uh, subsequently <laughs> picked it out for my birthday. And so it's just a history of the gorgeous covers that have come out from Penguin over the years. And there's, I go through, I flip through and there's a lot that jump out as ones being familiar to me that I have seen around in the bookstore. So if you're the kind of person that's interested in that kind of history with book design and the covers of Penguin, 
this is definitely like a beautiful book not to be missed okay so that's it that is my uh, Christmas book giving guide for 2016 I hope you enjoyed it um, let me know in the comments below if there's like a particular recommendation that you would like me to do like um, based around somebody's tastes or something like tailored to them um, I could try to help um, I don't promise to like you know know everything for everybody um, but I would do my best so um, yeah, comment if you're interested. In the meantime, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you're having a great week, and I shall see you soon with another video. Bye, everyone!